All right, people, Mr. Wright here with lesson 37 for the trombone, where we get into some advanced 6-8 rhythms. But first, I wanted to read this little uh, comment from Pierre Sam, who wrote in response to lesson 36. He says, these are pretty useful. Thank you for uploading. On another note, would you not recommend learning trombone by myself? Music school can be quite expensive, and I feel I can do it all mostly for free at home and here on YouTube. Any thought, thoughts on this matter? Uh, yes, I do have a lot of thoughts, and I might just devote a whole video to that on the, the different people who spoke into my life to fix all the massive problems that I developed as a result of kind of doing it on my own. I did have band directors. I had uh, Miss Godfrey, who was a band director in Charlotte, North Carolina, starting in 1974. And, uh, but she was a clarinet player and she never really spoke to any 12 of us really. She, she said, said a few things, you know, this is gonna, this note is in such a position. And uh, if you wanna go for higher notes, tighten up your lip. And, but really it wasn't a whole lot of, she never picked up a trombone. I didn't really have anybody speak directly to me about trombone until the summer after my 10th grade year in 1980. And I took trombone lessons from Durrell Sanderson and uh, he was the first chair trombone player from the Charlotte Symphony Orchestra. And he started speaking to me about how to subdivide the beat, how to, um, you know, to, to, to hit higher notes. And, uh, but he didn't realize that I was doing something wrong. I was using a smile embouchure to go for higher notes. I was like pulling back the corners of my mouth going, E for higher notes. It's called a smile embouchure. And it took me a long time to fix that. Uh, when I got to East Carolina with Dr. Uh, well, Dr. George Broussard, who was there, and two graduate assistants that did a wonderful job working with me. Uh, but I had a lot of speak people speaking into me, trying to help me with that because I was begging uh, because I didn't have a lot of endurance doing the smile embouchure. Also, George Broussard worked with me extensively on using my tongue because I was using the back of my throat. I was going, oh, 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 like that. And you're severely limited. Uh, playing, using the tongue helps to play every brass wind and woodwind instrument so much easier. And the tongue is so important in ta ti and arcing the back of the tongue for higher notes. And uh, the embouchure, when you play with your embouchure, you wanna make sure that the corners don't pull back, that you just, you're just flexing the lips tighter to the, to the teeth and to, to get those higher pitches. Um, so like, here's your bottom teeth, you're flexing your bottom lip against uh, your teeth to create a shorter vibrating surface. And uh, like I said, arcing the back of the tongue. But it's so important to have teachers speak into your life to say, and, and just listen to you and analyze what they're hearing and say this. And also George Broussard did this for me. Uh, I would play and I wasn't really listening to myself as I was playing. And he really helped me to listen to play my, my notes in tune. You know, there's a tuning slide right here in our hands and we have to use that and also our ear and the embouchure. But uh, if at all possible, find somebody to listen to you play and to give you feedback. If nothing else, grab your phone, video yourself, making sure you've got kind of a tight close-up shot of your mouth to make sure that you're not pulling back on the corners of your mouth to go for higher notes. And make sure you're using the tongue like a da, 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 or in the high register, T. And, uh, but it's always good. You know, you can most of the time figure out, if you really want to do something, you can figure out a way to make it happen. And I'm sure there's some band director whose main instrument was the trombone who would be glad to listen to you and just give some feedback. Uh, you want to have just somebody there to listen to you. And if, if all else fails, if it's just impossible and you're some in some remote location, then yeah, do a recording of yourself somehow, on a cassette recorder or whatever, but uh, to listen to yourself, are you playing in tune? Are you using the tongue? Are you using the proper embouchure? But uh, if at all possible, try to find a trombone teacher to speak into your life. So let's get on to lesson 37, exercise one. I've got my metronome uh, set to 64 BPM, so the dotted quarter note receives the beat of 64 beats per BPM. Da, da, like that. Uh, these parts, like this first part right here, after when you hit measure three, it's the beginning tuba trombone baritone part at the beginning of the song. One, two, ready, here we go. Then we 
go to the tuba part, the bass part that's in uh, at the beginning of the song, a after the melody starts. This is number two. One, two, three, here we go. Then we've got the, let me turn the accent down just a little bit, the main melody. The different sections play it. The woodwinds start off playing it. In the beginning, then it's handed off to the trombones and different people. And so uh, this one lasts four lines. So you'll start off on that first page and then go to the next two lines on the next page. So here comes uh, number three. One, two, ready, here we Now we do number four, where it goes da 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 The last note of that measure is just like a ghost note. One, two, ready, here we go. Now we go on to number four, where the last note of each of these first two measures is like a ghost note. Da -da 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 -da. You're aiming for that second beat of the measure. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -dum -ba -dum. And I'll play the top line. One, two, ready, here we go. Then this next part in number five is like the second of each one of these two eighth notes is a ghost note that goes dee -da ba -dum, dee -da ba -dum. So that second note of each one of those groupings is gonna be very, very soft, and like, like I said, a ghost note. One, two, ready, here we go. Then uh, number six is really the snare drum part, the rhythm of the snare drum part at measure 61. Dee da 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 da. Dee da 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 da. One, two, and I'll play the top part. One, two, three, three. Number seven, it's the trombone part at measure 61. 
that goes along and kind of echoes after the snare drum part. One, two, three, here we go. And actually the moving line, the more interesting part is the lower trombone part. Then number eight, which is the trumpet part at measure 61, where you go da da dum, rest, da da dum. And then that part, a few measures later, de da da, da de da, bum, ba, bum, like that. It's a cool part. One, measure, number eight, ready, right here we go. Use your tongue. Then we've got the woodwind part at measure 78. I'm going to slow this down just a little bit to 62 beats BPM because it gets a little tricky in there. But this is what the woodwinds have to work on. But now the whole band gets to work on it. Number nine. One, two, three. And that high F sharp is in uh, third position. Then you've got the brass part. I'm going to speed it back up to 64. And dum ba -da dum dum da da dum It's very soft. Dun, bum, bum, bum. And then notice when it gets to the trumpet part at measure 97 where it says, it's this is measure 143. You, it's, it's written as duples. So it's even though it's in 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, you perform those as D, bum, bum, dun, 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 dun. You basically change time signature and it kind of uh, works against the rest of the band to kind of create the sense of chaos right there towards the end of the piece. But here comes number 10. One, two, ready, right here we go. Then you've got the last little part, which is actually the introduction to the piece that the horns and altos play at the beginning, where it goes da da da. da. Ba, 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 and that last note of the measure is like a ghost note. One, two, number 11, eight, and... So that is lesson 37 for the trombone.